Good morning, it's David Wiegener here, coming to you all the way from Christchurch, New Zealand. This is free, yes it is, it's free. Chess coaching, why pay when you can get it for free? Off me. Okay, and why pay when I'm free and lies with me? And I'm no mug. So even though it's free, it doesn't mean it's worthless because that's what often people think. When something is free, they think, oh, it must be, must be rubbish. But I'm a reasonable chess player from New Zealand, Christchurch. Anyway, here is, um, here is, and to give you some idea, um, I, I only got second equal in the Christchurch Canterbury Lightning um, first round tournament the other day with 8 out of 12 um, so and the people I played uh, some of them are rated higher than m myself and they played really well and I only got second equal and usually I would be getting first like last year when I played in it I only played in it here and there I don't play in it religiously I'm not a member of the club but anyway here we go with today's game now this is now week 17 week 17 um, number one session so it's already 17 weeks and I don't know where all the time's gone you know I just can't understand how it's gone so quickly Anyway, here we go, and this is the game for today, and this was a Bledisloe Cup match, um, which is also, there's the Bledisloe Cup for um, for um, rugby in New Zealand. So maybe the Bledisloe means something, I don't know, but this game was played board four for Otago versus Auckland. Dunedin versus Auckland, or that sort of thing. So anyway, this is played on the Croatia South, I say, 30th of June 1984. And I was black. So I was playing a, a chap, I'll just give his initials, L dot C dot. And uh, this is the Bledisloe Cup. Uh, Bledisloe Cup match, you see. And what happens with the Bledisloe Cup match back then? in 1984, June of 30th is it's 1, it's 40 and 2 and 21 moves but the other thing is it's um the other thing is is it's uh, played with telegraphic um, between both cities where it takes quite a long time and there would be runners running, running with the moves to make that from the um, opponents in the other city, and they would come along and they'd play the move that the players played in the other city, and then when you, then they would push your clock, and then when you make your move, and that sort of thing, then you get a runner round to take your move to transmit the message. To the other city in this case it was Dunedin for me it was Dunedin to Auckland and they use Morse code and all that sort of stuff and telegraphic um, to um, anyway short end of the story is is this is a telegraphic match and so I just as soon as I make my move I push my clock as you usually do and start my opponent's clock but I don't take any notice of what's on his clock because um, there's all the running around in between and there's the submissions of the moves or my move and you have to wait till the person at the um, the um, the machine is ready to transmit your message to Auckland which it was for me from Dunedin to Auckland and then there's runners in between and they don't always pick up 
you move but you make sure in these matches you push a clock otherwise you just will lose on time because that's still part of the game whereas you don't time you you can't time your opponent's clock you just have to take it on face value that they're playing um, by the rules of chess in the other city too and so there is a tendency to kind of like to think about cheating or something like that okay so um, but but I didn't I don't believe I did this is the the ruler pairs or the Spanish um, Cozio defense for black where I play knight g e7 I was playing it a lot when I was a, a young lad, 20, 20 something year old lad. So the game takes several hours or four or five hours to play, um, to play 20, 40 moves, 30, 30 moves or so takes a long time to play them and Auckland were strong now continue on with developing don't get caught up in trying to win pawns or um, that sort of thing just keep on developing Now, so here, white is already kind of um, white is already kind of um, breaking that rule. Now, one thing I know is that um, c five. Here it looks quite good. Why is it good? Well, okay, so let's say the knight takes the bishop now. It, it might not be good. Um, then queen moves here. Then I can't play here. Okay, well, I'm just digressing. I'm not going to digress. As I'm just remembering a trap here that I can get to sometimes win this bishop by here and c5 and c4 winning the bishop but not if black white gets um queen d5 in it's a little bit difficult for that to happen because white can then make us a, uh, a square for their um, bishop on b3 while the queens are taking the rock now i'm actually doing this on purpose to you I'm actually getting you to look at the position without me moving the pieces because I mean some people say I should show you what I'm talking about but actually I don't think I should I think I should do it the other way around you anyway, I go b5 bishop b3 new main line this is the main line thank you computer bishop b7 now I'm threatening this c5 and c4 winning the bishop even if the queen knight takes the bishop, I just go queen takes, and then um, the queen has to move and I go c4, and I win this bishop. White gets two pawns, but I also get uh, if knight takes e7, queen e7, I also get to take this pawn here with my queen, but then white can get this pawn here. You see, so. This is the the um, difficulties with chess, is that um, the it can just be a lot of tween and throwing and that sort of thing. Anyway, bishop b seven, c three, a very correct move to play, because this player, by the way, is no mug from Auckland.
Oh, David. David. Oh, David. David, David, David. I'll get my reading glasses. Not like I keep saying. Not my reading spectacles. They're my reading glasses. Because it's getting a little bit dip. Now I can read it. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Rook F4, C5. Queen F2. King H8. Now, what a cheeky move that is. So that... <laughs> oh, dear. King H8. And then my opponent can't play this because I've got this move. It's a bit of a stunner. Okay, so and then I just win reasonable material with this night fork. My opponent went rook h4. F5, and guess what? I said this is the upper hand for black. Now, whether or not that's true or not, that's what I wrote. Now, this is move 19, and I had used 88 minutes of my two hours for 19 moves. So you can work it out. It's 88 minutes I'd used for my... Um, two hours for 40 moves and two hours. Whereas I didn't put my opponent's time because I can't see it. It's in Auckland. Now if the Queen takes the pawn now on F5, not C5, if the Queen takes the pawn now, I merely take White's Rook on H4 with my Queen. Queen H4. And this is actually uh, pro provoking my opponent to play what he did, but he doesn't need to. And I can actually remember. Now, why don't white just play pawn here, you might ask. Okay, why not? Well, this is devastating. Now what would white do? It's absolutely lost after f5, as far as I'm concerned, e f5, knight d3, because of the pending rook e1 check. And did I not say before, it's not good for white to start I didn't actually say it, but when white played 10 knight d5, they broke a, a world champion um, grandmaster's um, viewpoints not to do anything in the opening twice with your piece. And so thereby, my opponent, even though he's strong and everything, broke a fundamental rule, which I do too, don't get me wrong, and not developing first and moving his piece twice. Unless you're going to win major, major material, it's not a good idea. You need to complete your development. Now, because white's going crazy at my king, obviously, because if he, he, after f5, my position so good for black. And that's why I said my position was an upper hand already. Now, some people would say I'm a bit facetious doing that. Queen f5, like I've said, is no good as queen h4 is final. Because I'm threatening if bishop f7 after that. And I'm defending my f6 position with my queen on h4 if the queen's on here the white queen and I'm also threatening queen check just here not threatening it but just going to play it 
and then white has to go queen back here and I'll just go queen takes, king takes, bishop takes pawn and, and like it's pretty simple so considering that anyway now white plays this uh, great awesome brilliant move and I just take the, the Greek gift okay I don't feel threatened at all. It's almost like he tried to lose. King G7. Bishop F4. And now the obvious move for me. Queen F6. And that's the... Um, Rook F1. He played on c4 what a beautiful player I can be bishop b5 what happened here Yeah, I can't understand it. I missed a move or something, but anyway, this is a C4. Bishop E5, I must have gone Queen E5. I don't see anything else. Then we got this move. And where do we go now? And my opponent resigned, by the way. Um... I think I'll go king here. Yes. All over now. Is it? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure what went on here, but um, my opponent resigned after queen f6. So is Rook F1. I think I missed a move somewhere along the line. I don't think I played C4. Now if... Oh, I don't know what happens if that... Not pretty good, Dave. Don't look good, Dave. Hello, Dave. Don't look good, Dave. Uh, what do I do, Dave? And I, I don't know what's happened here, but anyway, I did win this game. Um, Queen F6. I don't know. I'll have to go back to Queen F6. And Rook F1. Now, if White played Rook F1 now. Then White's threatening Bishop H6. Uh, are they threatening? Or they're threatening Bishop E5. Check. Maybe here I would have played Rookie 7. I'll just say it, and that's what I oh, missed a move here, but um, and that's probably what I played, something like that, but I've just missed a move, that's all. Okay, so that's the end of my session today, and so uh, I welcome new subscribers, um, 
and uh, I've done a wee fun thing yesterday too because I quite like to just get on the internet and tell my experiences and that sort of thing so I don't know what happened there but I don't know what happened there okay I'm not going to keep going on about it but anyway I did win that game so for Otago Otago won that game on board 4 that's the end of my session thank you very much